Good morning, my name is Jake Livingston, Planning Ops for Rocky Mountain Black Team, and I will give you an update for August 29th for the Cameron Peak incident. Starting out with the weather, today we're expecting temperatures, depending on where you're at on the fire, to be in the mid-60s to the lower 70s. Winds will be out of the southwest at 15 to 20 miles an hour, and then switching to westerly in the afternoon. RHs will be around 30% and we're expecting thunderstorms in the afternoon, which could produce lightning, strong outflow winds, and then more rain. Starting out with Division Alpha Zulu, I mentioned previously the area by the tunnel on the north end of the fire, the 103 Laramie Road corridor. They're continuing to monitor that. They've prepped all the structures north of the Stub Creek Work Center. There were 44 of them up there. They've completed those, they'll double check that. They're looking at an area to the north and west of the Stub Creek Work T Center, looking at an area to put an indirect line down to the 103 road. Again, they're just scouting that out. They're also working on the indirect line that heads from the 103 road up toward Dead Man Road into the Division Foxtrot Alpha Boundary in the vicinity of DP 120. And you know what a DP is, a drop point, that's a, a common reference point for everyone on the fire. It's a place to meet. For example, proceed to DP 120, meet up with Division Foxtrot there. So it's a common reference point where we'll meet and exchange information or meet up with uh, resources, ground crews, equipment, and then assign them a task. Uh, moving into Division Foxtrot, the area between Dead Man Road, H33, heading over to the Foxtrot Lima break in the vicinity of Crystal Lakes. The majority of that machine work along that indirect line is, is complete. They're gonna be finishing up that and making Im improvements in some areas over the next one to two days. They've also scouted out and continue to scout some road systems south of Dead Man Road just for future options. Division Lima, just south of Crystal Lakes, the H169, H187 area down to H189. Today that's going to be complete and they'll continue to make improvements on that as they see fit. 169 for example, a heli spot. It's been approved for various sized uh, helicopters to land there uh, to either drop off supplies, pick up a line overhead to uh, do a recon flight of the fire, that sort of thing, or in a medical emergency pick up uh, someone who's injured. Moving into Division Romeo, the vicinity around Red Feather Lakes. Um, they've completed the Manhattan Road, prepping that. They have completed prepping a road system heading out to the east. They've connected dozer lines between uh, the Red Feather Lakes Road and then some of these uh, smaller uh, logging roads out in that area, all the way down to the 68 Road. And they're scouting out areas south of the 68 road for dozer line and then from from the end of that dozer line a hand line down to the highway 14 corridor so they'll continue to scout that today and again all that that work along the road system the primary control line is done they're also uh, looking at the kelly flats road over to the east which runs from red feather lakes road down to the highway 14 and they're assessing that they'll probably start uh, inserting hand crews, engine crews, and equipment in there to start prepping that road just as a secondary contingency line. Moving into Division Uniform, I mentioned previously about the Pingree Park Road. Um, all the structures from uh, CSU campus, a uh, Comanche Reservoir, Hourglass Reservoir, all those are prepped and the road system all the way back to 14 um, that road is prepped, you know, removing limbs from trees right up next to the road, removing dead snags, that sort of thing. So that's complete, as well as the structure prep all the way to Highway 14. Moving out to Crown Point Road, they scouted that out yesterday, and today they plan on starting prep work out the Crown Point Road. They've scouted an area that runs south off of Crown Point Road up to tree line, uh, just north of the Browns Lake area. And the plan there is to stick the surge group, which is incoming tomorrow, and the surge group consists of two hotshot crews, a Type 2 IA crew, 
and a fire module. So that's where they'll, where they'll be working there and we hope to uh, have them spike out in the wilderness. By spike out I mean just uh, camp out out there with um, enough supplies to last three or four days and um, they can camp out on right next to their work site and then continue on for several days to tie the road systems into the, the tree line. Coming around to Division Victor uh, near the Uniform Victor break, I'm still scouting out there. We'll have some of the hotshot crews that are coming in scout that out, see if they can give us some help with plans in that area. Uh, over in Division Whiskey, uh, we're working with the agency administrators and for putting in the, the line coming off of Highway 14. So we have good communication there and we hope to implement that uh, sometime this afternoon or tomorrow with help from all the cooperators. Division Whiskey in the area of Joe Wright Reservoir, Chambers Lake, Barnes Lake, Peterson Lake, um, monitoring that activity in proximity to the values at risk along Highway 14 and Long Draw Road. As far as the fire, um, it has received rain over the last several days in varying amounts depending on where you're at on the fire and you know primarily due to thunderstorms. Um, in some areas it was up to six tenths of an inch so the fire acreage gain has been really minimal and fire behavior has been has subsided quite a bit. Um, we have had discussions about that and really the only hazard that is removed by the rain is the fire behavior. Uh, this perimeter you know, the fire's around 23,000 acres, but there's probably close to 100 miles of perimeter on this, if not more, so it, it kind of gives some perspective there. But again, it just removed the fire behavior. We still have the, the hazards of terrain and all the beetle kill trees out there, uh, dead and down trees, half burned trees. So that's, that's a real hazard for firefighters to go direct on the line. So after a big discussion on that, we've decided to not put firefighters directly on the line. Um, there is still heat out there visible even after all that rain. Um, you have heavy accumulations of beetle killed trees either laying on the ground or standing and they, they do have heat inside of them in areas there is subalpine fir and Engelmann spruce and the duff layer, all the needle casts under those trees. Um, they're sheltered by the limbs so it'll be smoldering under there until warmer weather comes or wind and it starts to dry out and then that hidden heat along the perimeter of the fire will become visible when weather conditions change. Another thing to talk about is we added a branch five out to the northeast of the fire and that will be covering Crystal Lakes area, Red Feather Lakes area, and Glacial View area. We have structure protection group supervisors in those areas and what we're primarily doing there is just assessing how many structures we have there um, what equipment it would take to uh, put in place out there and again it's just it's a planning action out there we're just gathering intelligence and we're going to start moving resources out to that area just to get a real good idea on, of what's out there and then we'll also be moving resources out the Crown Point Road to help uh, improve uh, the vegetation along the Crown Point Road. Thanks for your time.